Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In this video tutorial, we will work on the login functionality of our application. In the last video tutorial, we designed this login form, this UI for a login form using Bootstrap 4. And in this video tutorial, we will add some functionality so that we can use this form to log into our application now the way we will add this functionality is by creating a service in our client application that will manage the validation of our user so when the user supplies his username and password to log into our application that username and password will be sent to our service that is running inside the client application now the responsibility of that service will be to communicate with our web api which is basically our controller class the account controller class and the login method that service will send the request to this web api method which is login and it is going to provide the username and password that is going to be used by our method to validate and if the user is valid as we all know we use this to test our api using postman we send a token with some other details to our client and if the validation fails then we say it's not a valid user and we send a list of errors back to the user so whatever it is we will send a response whether it is a valid response or whether it is an error response we will send it to the client for any request that they are making now so to create a service in our application that is the client application we will create a separate folder which will contain all our services and we are going to call this service as an account service because it is going to manage the account related services of our users so let's go ahead and create an account service so the first thing you want to do is right click on your client application and open your terminal by going to tools and click open terminal this terminal will open inside your client application and now you can run your ng commands which is the angular commands now the command to create your service is going to be ng g that is angular generate and we are going to use s that is for service and now for the services we are going to create a service folder and inside that we want to create this service so we are going to say services forward slash that says the folder name services forward slash our service name our service name is going to be account because we are going to use this to manage our account related functionality of the user so we'll call it account and that should be it now let's go ahead and hit enter now as you see that our service has been created if you go back to your client application there is a folder called as service if you open this we have two files one is the ts file and one is the dot spec .ts file so now we are going to make use of this service.ts file which is the account service.ts file and here we are going to write our code that is going to be used in our login form now as you noticed since we created a service it did not create any html file or a css file because this is a faceless kind of view it doesn't have any view it's just going to be used to communicate like in web api so now let's start coding our account service so we can use it in our login functionality so after creating the service by executing the command in the terminal angular has created a class for us with an import statement which is importing a module called as injectable an injectable decorator and a constructor for our account service class now what is this injectable module and what is this injectable decorator now in order to use the injectable decorator 
Angular needs to import it from the injectable module. And in order to import it, it is referencing this import statement so that it can import the module from Angular core. Now let's talk about this injectable decorator. This injectable decorator tells the Angular application that this account service class is a service. And once it tells Angular that this account service class is a service, it's going to inject it in the root of our application. And so once it is injected in the root of our application, when the application runs, all other components in your application can now access the functionality of this account service class. So what do I mean by accessing the functionality of this account service class? When I say accessing the functionality of this account service class, I mean that any other component, let's take an example of our login component, wants to access the value of login status of a user. So I have a variable here called as login status, which is of type boolean and now my login component wants to know that if the user is already logged in which is going to be either true or false since this data type is boolean so if it is true then it is going to redirect the user to the home page if it's if the user is trying to access the login page but if the login status is false then it will allow the user to access the login page because the user would need to log in in order to view the products. So in order to get access to this value here, we have to make sure that we tell Angular that this is a service and that's what exactly we are doing by using this decorator. So I hope now this should be clear that why we are using this injectable decorator. And what do you mean by accessing the functionality of this account service class? One important thing that I need to also tell you that before we go ahead and code all our methods and properties inside this account service class is that the values inside this class can be accessed through dependency injection, which is since we have injected this class inside the root of our application, basically the service inside the root of our application, we can use the values through dependency injection. And how we are going to use it using dependency injection, we will learn that when we start using this service inside the login component. But for now, don't worry about it because we will learn about it when we are coding the login component. Now, the first thing that we want to do inside the constructor of this service we need to instantiate an HTTP client object. Now, why do we need an HTTP client object? I think most of you already know the answer because we need to communicate with our web API controller and our web API controller accepts only HTTP requests, whether it's an get request, a post request, a put request or a delete request. So when we want to make these kinds of requests to our web API controller, we need to have an HTTP client. In using that HTTP client object, we can call our HTTP methods. So let's go ahead and instantiate this HTTP client object. We will call this client object as HTTP and it's of type HTTP client. Now the Angular app will add an import statement here for some people where it will be importing this module from Selenium web driver but we don't want to import it from Selenium web driver instead we want to import it from here which is Angular common HTTP. So make sure that you put the correct reference to this module here. Now once the reference is added there should be no errors while importing this module. Now the next thing that we want to do is create some properties that we would need to store some values and we can then pass these values through these properties to other components. So now let's go ahead and create these properties. 
So the properties that we need, let me just put them here. So the first property that we need is the URL that we need to access our web API, that is the login method in our controller, account controller. So I have created a string property of base URL login and assigned it the value of the string. Now we need three more properties, one to hold the login status of the user, if he's logged in or he's logged out. If uh, the, the second property is for the username of the user, to hold the username of the logged in user. And finally, to hold the user role of the logged in or authenticated user. Now these three properties. Now, this property is fine here because it's already initialized. Now, look at these three properties here. What do you think is the problem? Let's say I initialize this property to false. Initially, when the service starts, the user is not logged in. I initialize it to false. And I want to access this property inside my login component. Good. So when I go to my application, when I user tries to log in, because he's not logged in, obviously the login page will, the login component will load the login view. But if the user is already logged in, the login component shouldn't load the login view. Instead, it should redirect the user to home because he doesn't need to log in. He's already logged in. So how would it verify if it's he's logged in or not? He will go to this service. The login component will communicate with the account service and get the value of login status. So to get the value of the login status, the login component needs to first thing is instantiate that account service class in its constructor. So let's do that. This is just an example I'm giving you. We will be coding everything in detail, but just to break it down, what issue or what problem we are going to face by using the basic data type properties here, like Boolean string and string. And the problem, I will just show it to you. So inside the constructor, let's create and instantiate our account object which is of type of account service. Now, the next thing that we want to do is create a property that is going to hold the value for login status. It's basically going to get the value from account service and will be initialized to this variable in our ng on it method. So let's do that. So here I'm going to create, let's say a object, call it login status get and it's going to get the login status from the account service now i'm going to initialize this service in my ng on it method so i'm going to say login status get is equal to account now this is the first hurdle that we face when i hit dot i'm not able to access the property login status because it's private. So if I can't access it, how am I going to use it? Well, you might think we can make this public. Okay, but first let me just leave it private and try to assign this to this in our component. Okay, and see what error we get. Now the squiggly line appears and it says login status is private and only can be accessed within the account service class. So we cannot access it. It is private. That's our first problem. So now let's change the private option to public and now save this and see that we have no error. But in our account service class, if we are going to keep this public, then there is no point to create a login method. Now, the login method, what is it going to do? It's going to receive some parameters like username and password. It's going to validate the user credential based on the username and password provided. And then 
it's going to call the login API and if everything is valid that means the user is authenticated it is going to change the value of login status to true but if login status is already public which means that our login component can directly change the value of login status to true which means I don't need a login method here and I don't need this service the whole point of creating this account service is to manage user related activities like login registration to get products to authenticate the user based on his role and so on so if we are going to make it public which is very bad programming it's there is no use of this account service so let's change it back to private but changing it to private means I cannot access the value anymore inside my component so how do I solve this problem this problem can be solved by using asynchronous programming and we will make use of something called as reactive extension library reactive JavaScript library now what is reactive extensions reactive extension the short form which is rxjs which is reactive extension library is reactive programming it's asynchronous kind of programming if you have used uh, jquery you must be familiar with ajax where we use asynchronous programming to update values on our html documents or on pages where we don't refresh or reload the page but we do get the new updated value and we update the values with the new data that we received so we can make use of rxjs library in our angular application and using the rxjs library we can have our login component access these properties which are private by getting the values and to understand that in detail how we are going to do it I will show the entire process in the next video tutorial please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy for further updates but we will end this video tutorial here and if you have any questions you can always use the comment section thank you for watching